Hi, Sarah the Northwood Stitcher. I have been without power for a few days because here in China, Maine, we most of Maine got whopped with a big storm on Monday, very high winds. And um, it, it really looked like a tornado had come through. We had 80 mile per hour winds and possible gusts of stronger than that. But uh, I'm filming early so I can release this on Christmas morning. So I'm filming on Thursday before Christmas. You will see me releasing this on Christmas morning, 2023. I had a lot to show you guys and I didn't want to skip a week because I release all my videos on Mondays. If you don't know that and you've come across me on Flosstube, be sure to subscribe so you can find out when my next videos are coming out. Because if we ever have an outage like that again, I don't know if I'll be up and running in time. I, I really got worried there for a little bit. And I wanted to say sorry for my last video because a lot of you made comments and I simply could not respond because I had no internet, no cellular service. So when we did get power back up, all I could do was just heart and like and heart and, heart and like and hope that some of you understood that I'm just not chatty this video because I didn't have time. It's, it's been a busy, busy time. I actually had a moment, I think it was a few days ago, where I put on one of those fancy little sweatshirts with a Christmas print on the front, put it on backwards. And I actually walked around a few hours in the house like that before I figured it out and went, what's, what's going on? And then I said to my husband, how did you let me walk around the house like that? It wasn't like my hair was down. It's just been a little stressful. I still have wrapping to do and things to get organized. I'm sure you all do. I can show you though, because this is not going to be released before you know who gets to see you know what. I can show you my husband's stocking that's been stuffed. This is what he'll see on Christmas morning. It's severely stuffed. <laughs> so, shh. I had permission from Santa Claus to stuff it, and I will keep it hidden until Christmas morning, because that's when we do our stockings. Um, one of the comments was, what, I should hold this up again, what was the name of this chart? Unfortunately, I don't know. If anybody out there knows or recognizes this chart, um, I'd really appreciate it if you took a moment to tell me what it is so I can get back to that person. Um, this was stitched in 2003. I don't know if it was an older kit or chart. It has not popped up in my father's collection. My dad stitched this and I lost him in 2020 and it did not come with his stash contents. So I'm not really sure. It's so beautifully done and so detailed. Even the books have titles. Good Boys from volume 1897. Good Girls, all, all the different volumes of Good Girls and Good Boys behind him. Um, it's, it's, it's something we're just so happy to have. But unfortunately, I don't know who the designer of that chart is. And I, I haven't been able to go down any rabbit holes to find out. Um, another comment was asking, when um, and how did my father start stitching? I started stitching first. And I started stitching because I was in a, um, I was at a community college. I did my senior year of high school at a community college. And when I was in that college, walking around the halls in between classes, I saw a girl doing something. I thought it was needlepoint. And I walked up and I said, oh, is that needlepoint? That's really pretty. And she said, no, it's cross stitch. And I said, cross stitch, what's that? I had no clue. I, I come from a long line of crafty people and sewing people, but I had never been shown that. I'm the left-handed person in the family. Not many people wanted to teach me things, I guess. But um, she sat down with me, and it turns out she was in, I think, a class of mine, 
and she taught me how to cross stitch a small little ornament and I'm really grateful for her because as soon as she showed me it was as if a little explosion had gone off in my head and I was out the door running and buying stuff and getting bigger and bigger projects so thanks to her I started and I think it was shortly after I, well, I was, I remember when I graduated my, with my second degree, I wanted a large sampler professionally framed. I was a college student. I didn't have money for that. And I asked my father, I said, that's all I want for my graduation gift. That or a trip to Yosemite National Park. <laughs> so he opted to get the cross stitch framed. And I have a, it's a massive sampler. I should show you at some point. I don't really, I think it's upstairs. It's upstairs in our guest bedroom. So he started stitching as he started getting more interested in the pieces that I was doing. He started going and finding charts and books and graphs and found out that different male designers were out there and male stitchers. And he just started picking it up and we started talking about it. So that's how he came to start stitching. Um, I didn't really have to show him much. He's, he was very adept at learning things by doing things and taught himself the piano and um, just very, very crafty like that. He did a lot of woodworking, um, model building. So he was used to working with fine little things and dexterity, fine dex dexterity. So I, I really don't know what year my father started stitching, but it just took off with him too. And then it was an obsession for both of us. And we would take turns coming into the house with a big bag of stuff. And he'd say, huh, you say it's yours. I'm like, okay. And if we came into my house, he'd say it's yours. Okay. <laughs> so we wouldn't get caught with new stuff that we don't need. <laughs> but, I mean, who needs it? We don't want it. But it's cheaper than a lot of other things. I also had a comment asking what kind of magnets that I use when I use them on projects to do the frame release magnets. Or I also use the same magnets for when I'm doing my needle minders and I use that E6000 glue to glue the magnets. So I did a little research because I really didn't know what kind of magnets they were. They're the silver ones. How's that for technical? I have a little box that I keep all of my magnets in. Let's see if I can. Uh, it's like a little plastic box. I can't keep all of them in there for, you know, obvious reasons. It'll just be a mess. But these are the silver magnets I'm talking about. So they're silver all the way through. It's like it's encased in silver. They're called Neo. Dymium, D Y I U M, D D Y M, I U M. Let me see if I can hold this up. Neo Dymium magnets, and they're super super strong. And actually, when you Google this type of magnet, it'll say, "Are they safe to handle?" Well, the first thing they tell you is they bite. They're super, super strong. They're even hard to get apart. You do not get them apart by pulling on them. You have to slide them apart. And the only drawback to this kind of magnet is they are sensitive to heat. And I would say cold too, because if you do keep them, if you do allow them to click constantly next to each other, they will chip. That little silver part will come off. And that's why I didn't want the black magnets because they can leave scarring on your fabric or on your finished piece. So you're pretty careful how you use these. They work really well with E6000 as an adhesive to set them permanently on, on things. I just had them bite. Ooh, that was spooky. But that's the kind of magnet I use. I don't find them very often in craft stores. I do have to get them online. But once you find the sizes that you like and a supplier, just get a tower of them 
because um, you do have to use sets, of course. And try to keep them away from each other. It's really hard to do. Um, this, this set here came in these little like foam beds. If I can get these apart. Yeah. So they set inside these little foam core beds and then they just cushion together. So they're less magnetic that way. And then I have some really teeny tiny ones. It doesn't matter what size they are. They're super, super strong. I tend to get them in different sizes because if I have a tiny needle minder, you don't need a massive magnet. You need a small magnet. So that's my little magnet um, advice. I'm looking forward to making a lot of new things in the next year. To be careful where I put this too. Oh, I should show you too. Do you remember that tacky little Santa Claus that I picked up at a thrift store? It was actually a restore for 99 cents. And I said I was gonna paint it silver or gold. It's coming. I decided to go with gold. I thought this would look really great among my ceramic Christmas trees. And I do like the gold. I don't have many gold things, but the theme this year for our Christmas tree was silver and gold. So he'd even look good sitting under the tree in one of my sleighs that I have, or sleds. I have three now. I just picked up another one at the dump house. I'll try to put a picture of it in here. I went there looking for CDs so I could get some forms to do some circular ornaments. Couldn't find any CDs, but I found this big, gorgeous, well, I shouldn't say big. It fits under the tree, about two and a half feet, maybe a little bigger, very heavy wrapped iron spray painted gold sled or sleigh. It's a sleigh and I can put presents in it. I just love it. But maybe next year I can put together some little boxes or something and have this as a decoration in that sleigh. I just think it's cute. It needs a couple of more coats until it's completely covered. I am using the folk art Brilliant Metallic Treasure Gold. You can get that at craft stores. Michaels and Joanne should carry it. If not, you can get it online. It's a water base, so I'm having fun with that. Let me go to my little list, because I know there was a whole bunch of stuff that I had today. I hope you guys are enjoying the morning. I, I picture myself when this is being released having probably my third cup of coffee, I hope. I've not had many coffee mornings because of the power. We have a generator, but we've been turning the generator off to conserve propane. Um, and then we've been dealing with having a sick kitty, so that's been very, very stressful. Getting her to a vet without power, they're running on generator and they can't do labs. and. It's just been a heartache. But I think we've finally got the labs done. We'll have some news. She has an ap appetite stimulant pill and maybe we'll, maybe we'll be good. Santa Paws is coming because she's been such a good girl and I wanna make sure that she's happy. Oh, I got happy mail. Speaking of happy. I did some bad things in good ways. I went on eBay. <laughs> I found two things by Astor Place. Now I know that's a old name, but some of these things are just timeless classics. Now this is called Seasons Greetings, 10 Greeting Card Designs. This is book number 14, and it does have a date of 1986. Now you don't have to do cards. They'd make great ornaments, They'd make great framed little pieces. They're really sweet little stitches. I'm excited about this one, particularly the gingerbread house type thing. And of course, oh, chickadees. <laughs> Can't help my chickadees. <clears throat> they are done on perforated paper, but there's no reason why you can't do them on Ada. And then I found, this is book 45, 
This is called, it's another Astor Place, Christmas Victorian House. This one's dated, what? This one's not dated. I'm sure it's the same era, 80 something. Hello? No, not gonna tell me. But I really, for whatever reason, maybe it was the color of the fabric. Maybe it was the layering effect. They have perforated paper on top of the finished stitches. So these guys are done on perforated paper and then placed on the stitch as well as the wreaths. And I love all the little details. Santa is up in the sky, the chimneys, the moon, the stars. It's just adorable. So I'm looking forward to doing that in the new year. Yeah, so it's the wreaths and the peoples. But they said, what did they do this fabric on? It's a colonial blue Ada. So I've got to find that. I'll go through what I have, but I really need to find that blue. I think it's just an extraordinary stitch. I really like how the white pops on this blue. So it's it's gonna be, it's a specialized stitch. I know it's rather primitive and I've been attracted to a lot of primitive folk art type of stitches lately. I'm just going with it. Speaking of which, my girlfriend Sophia, who gives me a lot of the kits that she doesn't necessarily wanna do from her cotton and twine boxes, I have been working. It's taken me less than a week. I am working on the cotton and twine. Get rid of my needle minder. It's a December 2022 design. Now this comes with everything. If you're in their club and their subscription box, they send you a multitude of projects with the fabric, the chart, the needle, the floss, and the frame. So I do have this little frame to frame this up when I'm done. And I'll tell you guys, I'm almost done. All I have left is this. Oh, it's my needle sticking out. And this square. So two squares. Now I started this last... Friday night. So it's a fast little stitch. Particularly when you don't have power and you're sitting there using your neck noodle light to stitch by. But I love how vibrant these colors are. It's really a fun stitch. It's going rather quickly. It's going so quickly I don't think I wrote it down in my little stitch diary so I do need to get get that done. If you're interested in this chart, I did read Enjoy this gorgeous winter design, they call this winter design, which will look gorgeous displayed with the other seasonal projects to be released in 2023. It's the end of 2023. So I would go to the Cotton and Twine site. I've never been there and or the historical sampler company, because that's who this was designed by, designed in-house by historical sampler company. Maybe they have this available. I can't tell you, but I'm hopeful. So this was released in 2022 and they say in the writing, how I read it, it should be available now. Now, where did I put my needle? I saw it sticking out. I don't want to jab myself. I, I've had in the dark <laughs> a couple of moments where I put the needle under my fingernail. Ta-da! I've got this really cute, this is my favorite winter snowflake needle minder. All right, so I'm hopeful to get that done today. And maybe I'll get it even finished, finished by Christmas. Fully framed. Where can I put this? Put it over there. Another upset I've had this week. 
A lot of things that I've ordered online are not coming in time. What you gonna do? I'm just gonna relax about it. But I did allow myself to go into a bookstore. I'm not allowed to go into bookstores. I'm my father's child. And when I go in there, I come out with a pile. I was able to go in and come out with only two purchases, which I found from my husband, because he has to have books under the tree. But I got a new magazine. I got, what's the title of this one? Christmas Crostitch Favorites. So I think this is a UK print or UK issue periodical. Yes, it is. I didn't realize how expensive these things had gotten. I had my hot hands on four or five different magazines and I put them all back because I'm trying to be brave. <laughs> But I'm so excited about this one. This was one of the cheaper ones at $14.99. Yeah. Shall we? There's that little cutie. I don't see myself doing it because I don't have any little kids, but oh my goodness, penguins. That's adorable. This really cute advent calendar idea. All you need is a wood dowel and some buttons. And I do love these trees. And look at the pom-pom edging on them. Banners. Ah, oh, those are really cute. I never thought I'd like a pink Christmas tree, but in that pink Christmas tree, there are cats and birds. Oh. There's also a little alphabet that I can't show, just graphs. These are fantastic. I need to get busy on new Christmas cards next year, hand-stitched ones. But you can do tags, you can do ornaments, you can do cards. Very quick, cute ideas. What I usually do is if I look at a magazine, and I'm sorry if it's closed in a plastic bag and I can't open it, I'm probably not gonna buy it. Um, if there's more than four or five projects, that I'll do, I'll get it. These are cute little Christmas bears. It's adorable. I like the little guy with his list. I know there was another one in here that made me go, <gasps> oh, there's more bears. There's like three pages of bears. So they only showed you a few. There are these cute little, I guess you'd call them ornaments. They got dangly legs. I don't see myself doing those, but that's a perforated plastic. Be easy enough to, oh, there's more. So there's another set that I can't show you because the graph is on them. So there's an angel, a polar bear, and an elf as well with dangly legs. Um, they would make great ornaments. Very, very quick, simple cards. Oh yeah, these guys. This is what tugged at my heart. I think I need all four. How can you not look at those and not want to smile? They're just precious. And I looked at where those little dark backstitch fur marks are. They do go into holes. Some of these graphs 
are just nightmarish making up where the holes should go that doesn't have any rhyme or oh no there's a bad one <laughs> i shouldn't have spoken you need a super sharp needle to make your own hole oh they've got bicycles penguin cards absolutely adorable more quick little ornaments, tags, or quick cards. <clears throat> what I like to do when I find a simple design that I don't mind just sitting in front of the TV making five of, particularly for a card front. Oh, there's a fox in here. There's no finished picture. I can't show this to you, I'm sorry. That would be a really cute card. Um, what would I say? What I like to do is find that design, pull all the threads out for it, get maybe five pieces of paper or the plastic or the um, perforated paper or Ada cloth, whatever, and just sit in front of this TV and just make out five. If you can do five a month, every month, for a quick little stitch, of different things, then you've got, before you know it, 15 cards for 15 stitchy friends. Only give your stitchy things to stitchy friends. I found out the hard way. People who don't know what cross stitch is, they don't keep the cards. They have an adorable set of little Dalmatian puppies. So I was really happy to get this issue. I'll, I'll be happy with it. Happy playing with it. These are some more complex and detailed ones. I don't think I will do them. They're too big. They look cute hanging up, though. So speaking of cards, I want to give a shout-out, a very special shout-out to Becky in North Carolina. I can't thank you enough for your Christmas card. I know, right? She stitched the evergreen edging. She used a rip, ripped paper effect to do the snowman and the snow and the borders. She braided the scarf. She put a felt hat on, stitched, stitched the mouth, didn't draw it on, she stitched it, felt nose, and yeah, braided twine arms for twigs. But wait, there's more. She did the inside. And she did the back. Becky, I absolutely, we were floored when we opened this. My husband and I were just shocked and just loved it. We love handmade cards. Um, the amount of work that you put into this, I want to frame it. But now when I think of all the detail on the inside and the back, I want to be able to fondle it. <laughs> So I have to come up with some sort of framing system for this because I think what I want to do, and I do have one other card like this one that I framed. So I've made it so I can open it and look at it while it's mounted. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to mount it just up here with some glue dots so I have access to show it off proper. But thank you, Becky. It's just beautiful. If I had known, I would have put it under the tree to unwrap it Christmas morning. But it's just special. And I don't know how you did those little snowballs. I've never seen a punch that tiny, so I'm not really sure how that happened. But very impressive. Um, so that, that meant the world to us to get. And while I was thinking of 
Christmas things and all the things that I do enjoy for Christmas. I have this huge collection of Christmas earrings and pins and a couple of necklaces, not a lot. But once upon a time, I found a very tiny jewelry case. I mean, it's smaller than this. A little deeper, covered in a Christmas fabric. And I thought, oh, this is perfect for my Christmas stuff, my jewelry. And I, I think it was from a dump. I really think it was a dump house, probably on Cape Cod. I have since outgrown it, and it bulges open. It threatens to lose some earrings. And now it's gotten that I've gotten so many things on clearance because I like doing a lot of shopping in January. Just you guys wait. January is going to be a lot of shopping haul. So I buy these at 90% off and I buy two or three. I keep one. So I have candy canes. I have Christmas trees. I have reindeers. I have um, little candies. I have all kinds of earrings. But when your little jewelry box gets that crammed, you're just kind of going like this. You get frustrated. I got to get out the door. I can't see anything. So I've hung up a few of these on a makeshift frame. I took an old frame and stuffed some foam in there. Foam packaging that you get, you know, the nasty styrofoam stuff. I covered it in fabric, stuck it in the frame, hung the frame up, stuck some pins in, and now I have a makeshift way of seeing quickly my Christmas earrings. So this is like the first Christmas and six Christmases I've had access to my stash. But I need a bigger box. So I thought, well, I'll go on Amazon and I'll look for Christmas jewelry box. Nothing popped up. Christmas themed jewelry box. Nothing popped up. Christmas box with, ju with Chris uh, jewelry box with Christmas motif. Nothing popped up. So I sat there for a while and I thought, well, now what? I'm not going to find another fabric. What do I do? And it dawned on me. Come January, February, all those people who might be receiving a new jewelry box this Christmas and taking their old jewelry boxes because they're too small or they're just old, they might be putting them in Goodwill. I'm going to get a jewelry box from Goodwill and I will stitch a Christmas theme top for the jewelry box. So that is a project that I have in mind. Why didn't I think of that sooner? I did the typical American thing and went straight to looking for one to order. Disappointing. I should have been smarter than that. Water. I have to hydrate some more. What else was on my list today? Oh, scissor discussion. Somebody um, asked, what kind of scissors do I use? when I'm cutting up my my mill hill ornaments because the mill hills are done on perforated paper and you kind of need to get it even cut so you don't have that jagged hole left. And when it comes to scissors, I have no preference. If I can afford it, I'll buy it. I don't like buying um, cute little scissors that are gonna cost me $12. These I got on Tamu for probably 98 cents. They're super sharp, they're tight. They had a little screw so I can tighten it myself. I have a multitude of scissors. All types of decor, sharpness, length, Those are travel ones. Those are very handy. Um, teeny tiny, long ones, short ones. These don't even have a name. I used to get them all the time at the Christmas tree shop. These have a little piece of oxygen tubing on them so I can travel with them in a bag. Got these at Tamo too. Occasionally I find them on Amazon on clearance. My table behind me probably has 12 or 14 different pairs of scissors and all different lengths. I had a friend who was a visiting nurse and I used to get the little 
scissors that she would get in these sterilized kits for wound dressing. So when you open up this paper, everything you need is in that little package. You have the, the gauze, you have the scissors, you have the tape. What do you do with the scissors when those little packages expire? They actually do expire. Once they expire, they can't be used on patients. So I would get either from work or from her, because I used to work in a clinic as well, these little kits that you just take apart and I would end up with 40 pairs of these. They're very, very tiny. They're very sharp. Uh, they dull easily because they're not made to be reused often. They're stamped Pakistan. Sterling silver or stainless steel. Um, but these are great. The tinier the blade, the more precise the cut. But I've used much bigger scissors. These are Fiskas to get along the edge of that paper. I really don't have a preference. It's just, it's the cutter's preference, I think. And then there's that golden rule. What you use on fabrics and threads, you don't use on papers because it can dull the blade. So I have a lot of paper scissors behind me and in front of me, I keep all of my fabric scissors. And then downstairs next to my chair, the TV where I do a lot of stitching, there are two pairs of scissors, blue handled, black handled. My husband is well versed and you do not touch the black handled scissors for anything. Blue handles are our junk scissors. If you have anything to cut up, you use the blue handles. And then there's yet another pair of scissors in the kitchen on the kitchen island, and yet another pair in the junk drawer, and another pair on the in the knife block. So they're just everywhere. If they do dull a little bit, you can cut tin foil or aluminum foil to sharpen the edges rather than go pay somebody to sharpen them. But the general rule I have is don't pay a lot of money. Just find something that makes it comfortable to cut with. You can do ballet, scissor cutting, two pairs. So there's just uh, no rhyme or reason just getting along that edge and not using dull scissors. And if they really get dulled out, if I can't get them sharp, I know in my heart of hearts, I have probably haven't paid more than top dollar, $6 for a pair, so I get rid of them. Or they go in the garage to use as garage scissors, because <laughs> who knows what you're cutting in the garage. I, I have a very special pair downstairs, the black handled ones that my husband bought me years ago, and I think they're titanium. I don't know what brand they are, but I love them. So that's a very handy thing to have. Oh, I also wanted to share with you. I got other happy mail. Where did I put it? <gasps> <coughs> this blew me away because it showed up on the doorstep. <clears throat> you guys might remember Karen, my crafty sister from Michigan. She sends a lot of stuff that I show here that she's finished and how she did it and where she found some of her pieces. She found these books and sent them to me and I can't be happier. I haven't gone through this one yet. The Crafter's Book of Santas. It's all Santa stuff. So they're all different types of, oh, I opened up to the one that I want. <clears throat> I really want to make this hat. It's a felt hat with Santa and reindeer. Yeah, I need that. That's really cute. I'm gonna be on the hunt for little plastic Santa models. There are a couple of graphs in here, but there's an awful lot of Santas and different model styles. So wood carved ones, things that are made out of paper mache. It just, it goes on and on. Gourd Santas. The 
Thanks so much. Oh, and then Karen sent this one. It was two bucks. <sighs> this is Designs from Mill Hill. And you can see I've already been at this one. What I was so shocked to find out, it has a lot of the patterns in here of things that I've done years ago. So what did I determine was the year this was made or put copyrighted? 1999. I've got to show you some stuff. I didn't know this, but now I do. Mill Hill also makes not just the beads, but, um, you know, I know they made specialty buttons and stuff, but they have floral or flower beads. How can I do this? Maybe just this way. Ugh. And you can still get them. Look at those flowers. So you can do a bouquet? Okay. <laughs> One, two, three stitch has a lot of these beads. There's an Easter basket in here too. I wanted to show you, that one's pretty, but that's not the heart stopper. There's some snowflakes. Okay, so these snowflakes are heart stoppers. Let's see how to do this. Can't show the graph. Okay. Wow. Those are the bugle seed beads. Talk about drama. It's gorgeous. I don't know if this is a coaster. I haven't gone that far to do the reading. But, I mean, I just make ornaments, I think. And maybe design some tops for things. This is what I was so familiar with. The angels, two of those angels I've done from little kits. The one with a heart flying in midair, and then the one at the top with blue dress and the horn. I still have those patterns. So this book has the patterns and all the, the bead numbers in here. I was just floored when I saw this because I don't, I don't recall ever seeing something like this. Oh, and then this. Look at the mittens and the stockings. I've done the candy cane. I've got that pattern. And the ice skates, my word. Of all the tiny little trees that I have, I think those stockings and the mittens are probably gonna be best for that tree. Whoops. I'm really excited about this. Oh, and then there's just, there's more. My word, look at this tree on the gingerbread house. This is the heart stopper. This is called Christmas Sampler. It's all beads. I have to. It's just amazing. So when I was quickly going through it and just drooling on this, I can't understand their um, charts because I don't recognize those bead numbers. I know I have those beads, but I don't recognize the numbers that they chose to use. Their beading system has sometimes just a three number or four number and I know that when I, when I buy the beads, it's six, 
or five in a series. So it probably has to do with something, whether it's a petite or a seed or a bugle. So I have to investigate this. What I have to do is sit down with this and sit down with my Mill Hill beads, which I should confess and show you sometime. It's a massive collection. Um, and just see how they paired these up. And in this sampler, they've got these phenomenal heart-shaped beads of different sizes, as well as some beads that they use in the holly that I've never seen before. I'm really excited. They've got other samplers in here, but that's the one that really, that was the jaw dropper. Oh. I love my little notes, so I keep it on there. But this is the book. And I can't thank you enough, Karen. This was this was such a fun thing to open and fun thing to look at. And look at the Easter chick pulling a little Easter wagon. I can't wait to get some projects up from this one. Designs from Mill Hill. Beaded cross stitch treasures. So I do want to research to see, do they have other books like this? Have they done more damage that I need to, must I acquire more? I think so. i put my little note back on here. You didn't sign the note, but I'll put your name in the book. <laughs> I thought that was something else. What was what else was on my list? Oh, I did find another cross stitch binder too that I should pull out. Oh, and there was a confession that my husband wanted me to do. Yeah, I've shown it before. I'm sure I have my wolf stitch. I should show it to you again, and this will motivate me to do some more stitching on it because he is really upset that I haven't done any stitching on it this year might have done some in the spring. I'd have to pull up photographic proof though because I don't think he'd believe me. This is my project that seems to sit out and time out an awful lot. It's just not a fun stitch. It is called The Guardian. It's the gold collection. It's a dimensions kit. So that's what it will look like. Sorry for the glare. That's what it'll look like when it's done. And you can just make out there's a wolf in here. That's his nose. And he's, of course, the main focal point. I do have written down somewhere when I started this beast. Oh, it's getting wrinkled. I gotta take off the working chart. But it's got so many blended um, colors in it. So it's one strand of this and two strands of that, and one strand of this and one strand of that, and do a half stitch, and do a full stitch, and uh, very time consuming. I will give you guys permission to ask me often about this. I know I need to get it done. It's beautiful. It's just not going very quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying. But because it, it's such a painful stitch for me, what I do is I'll dedicate maybe, I say a week. I don't, I don't think my husband would agree with me. I'll dedicate a week, take a picture of before, take a picture after. I even label the pictures, the dates, so I can see my progress. Because he did make a point, if I took pictures and I could see my project, it would help motivate me. And it does, but there's just so much. And I haven't even started the back stitching. There's back stitching everywhere in this thing. Yeah. So not going to be fun. But when it's done, it's just going to be stunning. 
This is just a blank piece that I keep in case my green highlighter decides to bleed. It hasn't yet. I have a series of five different needles, two different needle minders on here. I can't park for beans. I don't want to learn parking. It looks really scary. So I'm just plugging along very slowly. But I will bring this down and I will make some effort. Because the problem is I have a lot of big projects I would like to start and I don't have any business starting them. Oh, and I should say, I got a box of Christmas stuff from my sister. You know, she sent up the box of Christmas presents. I unpacked that thing. My dog has this massive box in there. A massive Christmas box. I don't know what's in it. And I thought, huh. Dog's got a bigger box than my present. And then I found in the box like five or six very suspicious looking, they almost look like five by seven wrapped things, all the same shape and all to me. Do you guys think or do you think it's like a series of uh, ornaments? I think she went on one, two, three stitch and she saw something. And if I know my sister, she likes Halloween. So I think she picked out some Halloween ornaments because she knows if I stitch them, I'll stitch one for her because she's Halloween crazy. So I can't wait. By the time you watch this, I'll know what's in there or in them. So it sounds like I'm going to have a lot of projects to show you. That would be fun. What else was on the list? Okay, I confess with my wolf stitch. Oh, the Christmas chart collection. It, it's not going to be as, as big as the other ones. I ripped up an old calendar and I put an Edward Gorey Christmas, this was December, Christmas kitty in here. But it does say winter and Christmas. Now, a lot of these charts I can't show because they're working copies and or they're freebies. I don't know if we can get them, but let's take a peek. I have a Sue Hillis design in here called Reindeer Games. Boy, I've wanted to do this one. Aren't they cute? I need them as ornaments or just this banner too. That's going to be fun. Ah, and then another Sue Hillis called My Favorite Things. And I got this because I have this polka dotted linen. And I think they're just lovely done individually. Or as the sampler. But I think the polka dot linen. It needs to be done. I need to use some of this. My favorite thing, Sue Hillis. Absolutely cute. Oh, another Aster Place. Well, that's handy. Maybe I'll put my Aster Places in here. Oh, behave. Get in there. So this is called Perforated Paper Gingerbread House, book number 67. Boy, this would be fun to do. This I know. This was probably my dad's. He really was fascinated with 3D designs. And I don't know if he made any, but I know that this is one that he found. This looks like a lot of fun to do. It's just perforated paper. There's only like 10 DMC flosses. 
and the finished size, if you do it with a perforated paper, the base is five and a half by six and the height's only five and a half, it'd be easy enough to make this and then have a special box to keep it in so it doesn't get crushed. I think that would be fun. It's gonna be hard to decide what to stitch in 2024. I might have to take a new approach. This does not belong in here. I thought I had a special binder for this. Country Cottage Needleworks. This is the snow sampler. How precious is that? I gotta do that. Even little sections of this I might do for cards. Just the doves or just the house. Look at that. Why not? And I also want to make something called, I've made a few before, forever tags. Uh, it's like a, a Christmas or a birthday tag that you use over and over again. It either goes to the same person each year or you make it so you can easily, on the back side, put a new front on it so you can re-gift it to somebody else. That's what I mean by a forever tag. It just gets used over and over again. That, working. These are sections from magazines. Sections from magazines. Oh, tiny little ones. Maybe I could do a few of those. Ah! This is so cool. This is called Nature's Reflections. Designs by Holly Sherry Barbo. Oh yeah. So I got this because I like the trees in here. I don't think this video is gonna do it justice. That I think is a little, little junko in the leaf. But look at this. Those I really was attracted to. And if I do them on a smaller count, they can make awesome bookmarks. And that's kind of neat. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Hmm. There now. 1988. Wow. <laughs> oh, you can't really see it, but there's a moon. Maybe you can. It's too hard. It doesn't seem to show up when I see it in the camera. But I think with the right fabric, it's the snowy hillsides and the trees and the moon. I think that would be really dramatic. problem is it's not like I need anything else for my walls but I might not be able to help myself oh, do you guys remember these do you remember these tiny little kits I don't know how old these are but I kept them because the patterns are so simple. And you can, oh, here's the Starry Night. So this, I actually showed in one of my videos as a finished um, ornament. It's in a light blue frame, plastic frame, not this dark blue. This is the New Berlin Company. So, 1987. those tiny little things. These are things I think I stitched and gifted because I don't have these little gingerbread men now, but very quick little stitches, great little motifs for cards. That's a cute little cardinal. Dollhouse stuff. That's too cute. Oh, I even have a Deacon's bench. Oh, this is one of my first stitches I ever did. 
Does this have a date on it? Of course not. I just put my name on it. I didn't do when friends meet, hearts warm. Tiny little dollhouse table. And little quilt racks. Oh, and I love this little Santa face. Totally retro. Yeah, I saved all these little things. No, there's not much I don't save. <laughs> okay, working ones. Something from a magazine. Da, 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 da. This is something I've been meaning to do for years. You, I think it's six count. This is from a magazine, just cross-stitch of 1985. Look how old. But in here, this has always vexed me. You need a placemat. I think it's like a six count Ada. Does it tell me somewhere? Mm -mm. Yeah, six count Ada to make these placemats. I've always wanted to do that. And good luck finding a six count um, fabric. I did find, I think it was a six count white and I've tried to dye it and it didn't work very well. So I might try to re-tea dye them ever so lightly to see if I can't come across some sort of harmony with some colors that I choose to stitch that out quickly. It's not gonna be very time consuming. It is probably gonna be six strands on a six count, but I just wanted to do two or four for the table. And I've had this magazine this long. I came across it not too long ago and said, I'm gonna do that. So that's where this binder was. It was downstairs. And I thought, huh, I better bring that up and show. But I, I don't, for the life of me, remember where I put the stuff that I dyed recently. So I need to get Christmas put away and take a peek at organizing this whole craft space better. I, I don't want to say it's going to be my New Year's resolution, but probably will be. Hmm. Not much else going on in that, that magazine. Oh, don't rip, don't rip. Behave. I'll probably bring this back downstairs. Oh, look at this one. This is custom crafts. Backyard beauties. Full coverage. Oh, I love it. It almost looks like a photograph. Now, there's some other full coverages that take precedent over this. I've got one that looks just like my kitty cat, so I really want to do that one. Oh my goodness, this is just... <laughs> it looks like it's confetti stitched the whole way. Maybe, maybe not. How many colors are in here? Maybe 40? Oh boy. Good news is they show this on a 14 count being 19 and a half by 14 inches and you use two strands. It's going to take forever. I do love it though. Yeah, I might have to do that. So pretty. So pretty. Oh, this one's really cool. Oh, where did I get this one? I think I ordered this on a stash unload. Oh, I'm not gonna, well, maybe I can take it out. It is Needle Made, M-A-I-D, Needle Made. And this says just, German Weihnachtsmann. So 
So it's the German Santa. And I will do that one at some point. I love my Santas. This design is from 1994. It's a black and white stitch. That doesn't look overly complicated, but that whole border is stitched. This is done on like a gray Ada. So it's green and white. A lot, a lot of. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work. Where was this one? I'll put it over here. The other gorgeous one is here. It's called uh, Cross Point Design Seasons of Love. This was 2008, and I just loved the effects of that white on that type of blue. They did this on blue silk linen. It's a Wilchelt. It's on a 32 count. And it says, soft, tiny snowflakes drift slowly down. Starlight sparkles on crystalline ground. Hosts of angels sing praise above. Lo, it's Christmas. Lo, lo, tis Christmas, the seasons of love. It's just beautiful. Haven't a clue where I acquired this, but it's so pretty. Oh, here's another one that doesn't belong in here. Because I think I had a binder. I have to do better with my patterns. This is a little house needleworks and it's called Moonlight. I honestly don't know if this is in my to be frame pile. That's Moonlight. That's really pretty. Should look for a fabric for that. Santa brought me a giant spool of DMC white. The, maybe it's the B5200. I have to look. But I can just sit and pull off the spool and stitch away. But I should probably use it. He gave me that a couple of years ago. Oh, yes. Oh, heavens. My little dove design. I showed you guys that it's framed downstairs. It's almost in like this waffle not waffle. It doesn't look like a waffle. Um, pinstripe. It's a very grooved uh, frame. It's really cool looking. I just love this one. This was a lot of fun to do. Little Dove Designs Merry Christmas cross stitch chart. This was 2012. It's got a nice tag on it. It came from somebody's store. Don't remember where. I think I did it on a 32 count. I know I read it off to you. It was a four by 11 and a half. All DMC colors. It's just a fun stitch. That's a magazine. That's not worth showing. All it says is December 2008. I can't show you that. Another picture of a magazine. <gasps> the Needle Love Company. I gotta do this. Designs by Renee Nunman. Nunman. This is... How old is this? It's yellow. I've seen better days. 1989. The Needle Love Company. Aren't those patterns great? I love, love, love this. And the Santa, of course. And the fingertip towels. They look like stained glass. I shown you my fingertip towel collection. I might have like 60, 60 of them. I need to do some. <laughs> I 
wonder if I have those green and red ones. I haven't looked at this collection in a while, so maybe I'm due. I could probably get those done pretty quickly. They're awful pretty. Yeah, I should pull that one out too. How am I gonna decide? I gotta do something to decide, but if I've got such a collection, I just don't know. It all makes me happy. I know, Stitch, what makes you happy, but I mean, come on, how do I decide? Oh, and there's a chickadee bookmark. Now this came from the Cross Stitcher magazine. I don't remember what year or what issue. I gotta show it to you anyway. It's just a copy. At one point in time, I thought if I copied my magazines because I have, I don't know, 20 binders to my left here. I thought if I copied the patterns, then I could put them in a binder and just have it to stitch. Well, there's just too many of them. I have to figure it out. But look at that one. That's just amazing. <sighs> it's not a complicated graph. And it's only got maybe 12, 14. No, not even, because those are back stitches. So maybe nine colors. Maybe you guys can help me figure out how to choose. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is my last video of the year. I'll see you guys next year. It's kind of exciting, but I just hope you guys have safe and wonderful holidays and may your weather not be too violent. That windstorm was a doozy. I don't care if I see wind for a while. It took away all of our snow, all the rain that came down. It was almost 60 degrees during this windstorm. So we have, we won't have a white Christmas, which is just a bummer. I keep threatening to move to Alaska. I need snow in winter. And it's the first official day of winter. This is Thursday and it's going to, this video will be released on December 25th, 2023, 2023. So maybe next time I, I'm signing on. I will see you with some snow. Be safe. Please send me your comments about how am I to decide? How do you guys decide? We'll see. Happy crafting. Happy stitching. Be safe. Bye.